Dan Watson, learningcameras.com. And sorry this took so long, but we're gonna go into the winner of the first photo contest, as well as my edit and how I edited this photo. So we're actually gonna edit it live in Lightroom. And uh, I'm also gonna give you a chance to look at some of the other people who entered this contest and some of the stuff that they came up with. This was really creative. Thanks guys so much for sending in these submissions and uh, some really good stuff to take a look at. So first of all, let's get to our winner. Our winner is Devin Fox uh, out of Colorado. And he said he used Lightroom 5 mostly for everything and boosted the contrast a lot working in the curve tone, played with the luminance values and also individually edited the skies to lower some of the highlights and boost the clarity. Also use split toning to get some more uh, of a film look with the yellowish highlights and the blue tinted shadows. So that is the winner, Devin Fox, and I am gonna put some other information down into the description if you wanted to see some of his other work because it was actually really, really good. And uh, so that's the basic on him. And I also have for second place, uh, it's Moner Tefali, I believe, and it's from uh, Casablanca. And it says use Photoshop to replace the sky part, uh, make some simple adjustments in Lightroom. So uh, both Photoshop and Lightroom there. And in third place, we have Peter uh, Morris and did edits in Photoshop CS6. So those are the basic winners, but we're also going to show you, you can see some of the other entries and how good they looked and some of the other styles that people came up with. So, uh, now enough with that, I'll show you how I edited this photo myself and I use Lightroom and right now I'm using Lightroom five and I think it's on point two right now, whatever the CC version is. So we'll take a look at that right now. All right, now here we are in Lightroom 5.3 actually, and we're gonna take a look at how I start this photo. Now, the first thing I do is kind of make sure that my exposure balance looks right. Now, this is a very hard case right here because we have a blown out highlight in the skies and we have all of these shadows down, uh, down here. And so capturing all of this is really a good thing for an HDR, but I'm gonna show you the power of a raw file and that we can get almost all of these highlights and shadows back. So I'm actually gonna boost my exposure just a tad because my main subject is right here and I'm gonna care less about the sky right now. We're gonna worry about that later. And you could even Photoshop that out and put in a new sky if you want. And then uh, once we do that, I'm gonna give it just a little bit of contrast just to add back what the raw file didn't have in it. And then we're gonna add some more later, but uh, just to basically give it what we would on a finished image. Now I'm gonna drop my highlights down. My highlights are the sky right here. And we're gonna see that starting to come back. I'm gonna go ahead and warm up the photo to give it kind of the look that I want it to go. That way I can kind of see it as I'm going through. Um, my shadows, I'm also gonna up those to try to get some of that information back from there. And then one of the things that I do is with these whites and blacks, I hold down the Alt key and then I drag my slider up or down. And this, uh, this allows me to see where the whites begin to start clipping. So um, I can see my white levels are pretty good there. When I go to my blacks, I don't have a lot, so I'm gonna bring those down to where my levels start to come back on that. And there I get, um, I get my black levels back on the car from that. Now I'm gonna boost the clarity on this one. And this is a good one for that. I'm also gonna give it a little bit of vibrance. And uh, a lot of times I don't go up on the shadows. In fact, sometimes I'll go down a little bit on the shadows. Uh, I'm gonna kind of, or on the saturation, I'm gonna kind of leave that where it is right now. And uh, on the HSL, sometimes we can go in and kind of selectively edit the, the colors of things. Now this car doesn't have a lot right here. However, I do see some of this uh, aqua and blue. So I might, I might come and add a little bit of aqua and blue here. And I'm actually gonna pull down a little bit on the levels of the blue slider and the aqua slider. And you're gonna see that it kind of brings the brightness down on my car to the left right over here as I do that and play around with that. And the blue is also gonna bring back some information in that sky. And that's what I'm after on that one. Now, let's uh, head down. I'm not gonna do any split toning yet. I'm gonna head down, do some general sharpening. Uh, if we take this, we can click on an area that I know is kind of in, sh that it is sharp. And so it's in focus. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this masking slider. You see, I don't care about masking, I don't care about sharpening the actual car. I wanna sharpen those details around it. So I'm gonna up the sharpening a little bit and I'm gonna hold down that Alt key to get that mask on there. 
Now I also see some noise in there, probably because I did some increase in the shadows, and uh, it was filmed at, 8, at ISO 400, so it's probably from when I did that. So I'm going to add a little bit of noise reduction to kind of take that out. I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not on the image. So okay, so now I've got a basic photo right there. Now here's some of the tricks that we're going to do. I'm going to add a graduated filter. You can also do this by brushing it in. The graduated filter is one of the easiest way to do these. And you just drag down, and here's how it works. Everything above this level is going to take on whatever I set it to, and everything below that level is going to not. So I'm going to actually take my temperature down. And what that's going to do is you can see when I do this, if you were to do it all the way, I now have a blue sky that was not there completely. And so Lightroom is able to keep all of that color information in there we just weren't able to see it. So I'm also gonna bring those highlights down a little bit, uh, up the clarity, and you're gonna see all of that information come back. Um, yeah, the saturation's a little high as it is, so I'm probably not gonna do that. You can also color tone these. So you can select a color, and let's see if this works, okay. So I can actually go in here and kind of modify the color of that sky. So not only did I bring back that color, but I can kind of put a tone to it if I wanted to. So you can see you can get some really creative stuff going on in here if you want to. Uh, neat, neat things. So I'm going to actually kind of stick, stick towards the blue, kind of lighten it up a little bit. And we're going to go with that. Um, now that I see how much of that I've brought back, I'm going to actually increase the warmth of my photo in general. You see it starts to lose the sky if I do that too much, so I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit. And I might even, oh, I went down a little low. Okay, and I might even bring back some of the saturation uh, to bring back some of the reds into the sky. And so there we've got a pretty basic photo right there. Everything's starting to look good. Now if you wanna get kind of a nice finish on that, I know that this car hood is supposed to be really smooth. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take my adjustment brush and I'm going to put a, a noise reduction layer on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint on this car hood right here. And you'll hardly see this on your computer screens most likely by the time this thing is compressed. But you can see this in the photo. And I'm not looking to put noise reduction on the detail areas. I still want those strong. But on the car body, this is where I'm going to begin to want some of that to smooth out just a bit. And it's gonna, uh, gonna give it kind of a nice reflection on here. You can really start to see those details. I really don't even need them on some of this floor. I kinda wanna tune that out. So it basically lets me paint on some of these areas. And uh, even in the sky, I might do a little bit of noise reduction on the sky. And just to keep that a little bit less detailed. So that's what we're gonna do on that. You can even lower the sharpening a little bit on those areas. And if I were to zoom in here, um, you can start to see that I've got a really nice smooth hood, but still have plenty of detail in detail areas. So nice reflections on this. You can really see everything on there. So that is starting to look good. And so we'll call that a finished product right there. And I can even add some effects, like a little bit of a vignette to that and bring that down just a tad. All right. And another thing that I like to do instead of a vignette is you can add in Lightroom 5, you can add these radio filters. So I can basically say that this is my subject and I can draw this radius uh, circle around this and then I can bring down the exposure around it. And that will allow to, to darken those areas. I can bring down the highlights in those areas to bring back some of those whites and I can even uh, kind of boost the shadows. I, I can do whatever I want and I'm not affecting the area of my image. I can change my saturation levels and I'm not I'm basically not changing my subjects. That's a very nice tool for doing some of that. So uh, that's the edit for that. And uh, let me know if you have any questions on how we did that. And you can take a look at the results. I'm going to have them all posted. I'm going to post the actual image too on the website at learningcameras.com. So head to the website and you can check out the full details of that and see the image up close as well as kind of a before and after between what I did and maybe what you did. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.